Okay. Well, that, that's interesting. And so how, you know, if you if we look at your Canadian tour win, was context a part of that as far as, you know, reframing that um, maybe the situation and your perspective on on winning? Was, was that a factor there? Yeah, I mean, the change in the context was probably uh, directly involved with the fact that I won that week. Um, and it's a great example of context, actually. I was playing the first few events in Canada that year and kind of yelling, make this, I got make it, I got this, I got make it, I got all of them. I just wasn't excited to play the Canadian Tour. That is, you know, my second year in Tour, I had played a bunch of Canadian Tour as an amateur. I just wasn't, for me, like, it, it's not that I, you know, wasn't happy to be there. I just wasn't, you know, a teacher that was just like another another week in the, you know, in the schedule. It wasn't anything terribly exciting. And I remember going out to uh, Detroit for the British Open qualifying and, and playing at Oakland Hills, which had set up like a U.S. Open trial run for the U.S.G. I was taking a look at it. It was the British Open International qualifying. And we got there with Charlie Hoffman and Daniel Jelfa. And uh, didn't play well in the morning, but in the afternoon on the on the big course, which is what the U.S. was open, it was set up I mean, I was playing great and playing better than both those guys. It was really exciting to be there. And, you know, it felt like a mini DJ tour that I mean, there was a lot of guys, like, you know, tons of guys on the on the PJ tour. Basically, everyone that wasn't in the top 40 in the world was, was there qualifying for that event. And um, it just really fired me up. I was really excited. And I got back the next week at Edmonton, and it's kind of just like, you know, like, it just wasn't exciting to be there. Um, you know, it was like playing the, you know, the British Open qualifying with all those guys that I wanted to play against. And uh, I spoke to a lady who was working with the time, Deborah Graham, um, and, you know, she said, well, you know, kind of gave me the suggestion that, hey, like, you know, if you want to get on the PJ Tour, it's like it's those guys all the time, you know, winning on the Canadian Tour is a step. Like, you know, these Canadian Tour events are like a PJ Tour event to you because if you win this, it shows you're ready to, you know, move on or have the potential to move on. And, uh, you know, it kind of totally changed my attitude is that, look, this is, you know, a stepping stone instead of just something else, you know, I was playing in before Q school kind of thing. Um, so that was, a, that was a great example for me. Like, you know, my context that week was 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 very helpful and, and was a major part of, of me winning that week, whereas, you know, before my context, it's just, it's just like an intro that, I mean, it wasn't doing me any good. It was draining me of energy, and it wasn't, it wasn't helping me Well, yeah, that's interesting how, you know, you can you can change the context a little bit from, you know, looking at that Canadian Tour win as, as a milestone achievement or, as uh, as you say, just positioning it as a, as a stepping stone on your way to your ultimate goals. And certainly, um, you know, it takes a lot of the, uh, the pressure off in a sense, I guess, if, if you're expecting that that is something you need to do in order to keep moving as opposed to an end goal that you're finally going to achieve. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that that event for me that week was like a PGA Tour. I mean, that was something that I said, hey, if I want to get the PGA Tour, then I better win here. So this, this in essence, I'm playing to get on the PGA Tour. You know what I mean? Like this is this is the stepping stone. This is what I need to do. So yeah, I just just changed the totally changed the context of what I was looking at. You know, how I was looking at what I was doing, and um, you know, it trickled down into all parts of my game and my my mental approach, my attitude, and, and uh, decision making. I mean, everything. Uh, that's why I just think that I think context is such a powerful tool because, you know, it just, it, it just transforms your whole, I just think when you change that context, your subconscious changes and that affects your, your actions and your behavior and your emotions. Right, right, for sure. Interesting. Okay. Um, looking at obstacles, you know, I, I, I'm sh- I know every player that's had success has to deal with obstacles and challenges to, to reach that pinnacle of achievement and, you know, what have you gone through or what have you discovered in your career and how have you dealt with obstacles? Um, well, coming from a, you know, small town in, in Canada, um, trying to make out a PJ tour is no, no easy task. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've had struggles with you know, learning the golf swing, improving my, my physical skills, improving my short game, um, improving my mental game, everything. Um, you know, it's been, for me, it's, it's been not, I mean, one single thing. It's just been a, you know, total effort on all parts of my game to keep improving and keep improving. And, and um, you know, like anyone out there, anyone else is out there, you know, like anyone, everyone's got their own kind of things they need to, they need to tackle. Uh, that they need to, I don't want to say fix, but improve on and and, and get better at uh, to get to where they want to go. Um, for some people, they are very physically 
talented and just need to get the confidence or pick up mentally what they need to do. And some people are confident and, and um, mentally sound, but you know need to work on the physical side of things. And I mean, so, sometimes it's up about still just figuring out what you need, what you need to do, or what, what kind of makes you tick. Uh, that's why I think a lot of players don't get out in the PGA Tour until they're thirty or you know late twenties, early thirties, um, and. The younger players are, you know, definitely exceptions to the rule, although it seems like now more and more younger players are more comfortable getting out there. But um, at least from my generation, probably your generation, I mean, you know, most of the guys that took to your 30, I don't think there's been a guy on the PJ, you know, Canadian on the PJ Tour that's got in card and kept it in the early 20s. Um, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, I think most of the guys, like Weir, you know, comes in line 28, 29. I mean, Hearn's been out there a few years now, and, um, you know, McLuhan just got out there and, and the last and stuff like that, I mean, it's been, you know, there's anyone out there when they're 21. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It, it definitely takes uh, quite a bit of time to, you know, develop all those skills and the confidence and the comfort level and, and the experience that you need to uh, to kind of get through all of that. So, so I, you know, I agree with you completely. So, um, and, just, and just to add to that, too, um, you know, it's, well, not even just stuff on the golf course, too. It's, um, you know, we talked about stuff like the financial stuff. Is it, is it professional trying to be financially viable long enough to make it? Um, the travel, um, relationships, going with family and friends. Um, you know, some people struggle with lifestyle issues. You know, they get into the party and the drinking and stuff like that. I mean, there's a, I mean, there's just a whole, whole, whole bunch of obstacles, uh, um, as far as going along with professional golf. And I mean, a lot of it, you know, I hate to go back to context again, but I mean, having having the right context can help you kind of get through those obstacles quicker than, than if you don't. Yeah, certainly, uh, certainly, all of those things you've listed are, are character builders and, and sort of uh, you know build your strength as as you go through um, you know many of those obstacles and, and makes you stronger to uh, toward achieving your goals. No question. Yeah. Who's uh, who's been most influential for you on the mental side of your games? Or any any particular individuals that, that come to mind or um, that stand out? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess the first time in coach I worked with was Deborah Graham. Um, I also spent some time with Fred Shoemaker, um, which I, we mentioned before, the extraordinary golf. But probably the biggest help for me in the mental side of the game has been Paul Dillon out of Toronto. Um, he's been a huge help, and um, I've just enjoyed working with him because it's um, – you know, it's just very, very scientific based and they're very good information and, and really well just, I guess, uh, displayed and, and, uh, and shown to me. And it's, you know, it's been, uh, it's been just really simplified how I go about things and really simplified what I look at when I'm, you know, looking at my mental approach, just, you know, life in general and, and the golf course. I know anyone's played about the golf knows that it's a life, you know, all your faults in life show up in your golf game. So it's all kind of one and the same. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's that's great that you've had some some uh, key people there to help guide you along the way. Have, have you, you know, on that topic, you know, your circle of friends have they been influential in your success? You know, do you do you consciously spend time with successful players and successful people, or try to avoid those people that are negative? You, you know, do you talk do you, do you talk about golf psychology with other tour players? Um. I guess I get to answer those questions in, in order, I guess. Um, I definitely think some of my friends have influenced my success. Um, one guy I like golf with is Jimmy Walker. He's played in the PJ Tour. He's a few years older than I am. Um, and he's been, he's just been great, you know, seeing the success he's, he's had and being around someone uh, successful like that and, then, you know, learning from and playing against and, and whatnot, that kind of thing. I, I mean, having friends are at a higher level than you is never a bad thing to me. It's always a great, great way to learn and, and it's good. Inspiration to keep working hard and wanting to be out there and join them. Um, I don't consciously, I guess, try to make friends with players just because they're good, you know what I mean, or, or, or stress them out. Um, I'm lucky a lot of my friends are pretty good players, but I also have friends that maybe haven't had quite as much success, but I consider as, you know, smart people, good people, people that appreciate their input. Um, um, and, you know, second question, if I talk about golf, I come up to you with my peers, I mean, you know, there, there's some guys that they, I will talk to it about, and some guys that won't. I mean, you can just tell there's some guys that don't, you know, that aren't that, um, I guess, team that is, they go inside what they do. You know, they don't know much about their swing. They don't know much about their mental game. They just kind of go up there and play, and they kind of, you know, 
that's just that's just what they do. They don't want to talk about it. Um, with some guys that you know are more, uh, I guess you know, in touch with that kind of stuff, interested in that kind of stuff, and with that stuff you use to be the kind of guys that I guess know their golf swing, know the ins and outs, and all that kind of stuff. And um, you just have to kind of know what to talk to because some people that they won't want to talk about it, and some people, you know, their eyes will light up and they'll, you know, you'll be talking for two hours. So right, right, yeah, no kidding, that's for sure. Interesting. So you wouldn't really necessarily have too many open discussions then with, with you know, you mentioned Jimmy Walker, um, you know, as a guy that's already out there and, and discussing, you know, some of his his uh, thoughts and, and what he's done out there. Does that not really come up or you just kind of talk about, um, you know, day-to-day things? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Jimmy would be one of the ones that I would say, like, you know, we sit there and talk about golf psychology for two hours, and you don't talk about what he does, and, you know, we, we talk about some stuff here and there, but I have a friend of mine that, um, you know, known for longer, you know what I mean, or more of that kind of stuff, where you sit there and talk about yeah. stuff like that for two hours. I mean, it's, it's more of the personality. Um, okay. You know, someone like Jimmy, I'm sure, knows enough of what he needs to know, but maybe that's not something that's even interesting for him to talk about, or he finds interesting, or his other friend, friend of mine, um, you know, you could sit there and, you know, have a beer and talk about, you know, golf psychology till, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that kind of thing if, if you want it. Um, yeah. And I think there's, you know, there's, there's lots of guys out there that have, uh, have their head in, in the right position, you know, mentally about the game and, and, you know, consciously aren't really aware of what it is they do, but they do the right things. So, right. Um, you know, that, that can make it a difficult discussion too, no question about that. 